Здравствуйте, hello and welcome to Russian language class. So let's have a quick recap of the topics we learned in the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed about the instrumental case and its uses. And we had discussed that instrumental case can be used to denote the instrument of action. And when it denotes the instrument of action, we do not use any preposition before the noun. For example, studenti pishut karanda shom ili ruchkai. Students write with a pencil or a pen. So, here as you can see, karandash and ruchka are in the instrumental case and they are not preceded with any preposition. The other use we had discussed that with the preposition sir, the instrumental case of noun denotes the person with whom an action is performed. For example, So, we went for an excursion with the teacher. So, here as you can see, Spripada Vachilyam or it answers the question skim. Skim we ye zili na excursio, me ye zili na excursio spripada vachilyam. The third use we had discussed that with the verbs stanovitsa stach and bridge we use the instrumental case of nouns. Ya khachu stach engineerum. So, I want to become an engineer. So, here we are using the noun after the verb stach that is why engineer has been changed into the instrumental case. So, it engineerum is the instrumental case form of the noun engineer. And apart from these three uses, there are other verbs also mainly reflexive verbs which have non-reflexive English counterpart. So, which basically denotes the non-reflexive meaning. So, whenever we use those verbs, we use the instrumental case of nouns. For example, znakomitsa, paznakomitsa, strechitsa, strichatsa and so on. Apart from this thing, we had also discussed the expression druk druga, druk druga which means each other or one another. So, when we use druk druga, we have to basically notice or be careful about two things. The first druk has to be in the nominative case and the other druk, the next druk, the second druk can change its form as per the case it is being used in. For example, mi chastas paminaim druka druge. We often remember about each other. So, here as you can see, spaminach, which is to remember, takes akum or achum. So, basically, it takes the prepositional case. So, that is why we have changed the next, the second druk into the prepositional case, druk or druge. So, this was the previous topics that we learnt in the previous lesson. So, now we will look at the new topics that we will be covering today. In the previous lesson, we had discussed about the uses of the instrumental case of nouns. The uses we have already discussed in detail. Now, we will learn the declension of singular nouns in the instrumental case. So, how do the singular nouns decline in the instrumental case? So, let us first start with the masculine and neuter nouns. So, how do they decline in the instrumental case? So, we will learn the declension through the examples. So, for this purpose I have written the sentences and the nouns as the answers in the instrumental case. So, let us start from the first sentence. Chem vi pishiche na daske. Chem, chem is the interrogative word which requires the answer to be in the instrumental case. Chem vi pishiche na daske. So, what do you write on the blackboard with? Or with what do you write on the blackboard? The answer I have written in the short form mealum. So, meal is chalk. So, male has changed to malem. Male, as you already know this word before, male has hard ending. So, it ends with a hard consonant. 
So, if a noun ends with a hard consonant, how do we decline that noun in the instrumental case? We add om. So, basically here we are using om at the end to get its instrumental case form. Chemvi pishichena daske melam. And here mel denotes the instrument of action, that is why we have not written any preposition here. The next example is skim vi rasgavari vaite pachili phonu. With whom are you talking on phone? Skim vi rasgavari vaite pachili phonu. I have already told you that skim means with whom or the person with whom some action is performed. And the answer I have written here is sdrugam. Sdrugam. So, here again druk which is the nominative case form and a noun masculine noun with a hard ending or hard ending consonant which is ge will take the same ending as miel. So, here also we have added om the same thing will add here to get its instrumental case form sdrugam. So, druk becomes drugam with friend. The next is Skim vi ye jiche fmuzie. Skim vi ye jiche fmuzie. Ye jiche comes from the verb of motion ye khat, which means to go or to come by means of a vehicle or by means of a transport. So, with whom are you going to the museum? And the answer is spripada vachilim. Spripada vachilim. So, here as you can see, pripada vachil, if you remember the spelling, it ends with a soft consonant or a soft sign. So, whenever you come across a masculine noun with soft ending, what do we change in the noun in the instrumental case? We drop the soft sign and add yim. So, pripada vachil changes to pripada vachilim. So, with a teacher. The next example is gidya na khodatsa wash office. So, where is your office located or situated. So, here we I have used Ryadam Smuzyam. Ryadam Sir is an expression that means besides or near. So, near the museum. So, Ryadam Smuzyam. After Sir, we are supposed to use the instrumental case of the noun. So, Muzyai which again has E Kratke ending. So, how do we change or how do we decline a noun masculine noun with an e kratke ending? We drop e kratke and add yem. So, muziei becomes muziem. So, these were the nouns which are masculine nouns and there, there were two endings. First one was hard ending like miel and druk and the other one was pripada vachal and muziei. So, in the first two nouns, we have used the suffix om and in the other two nouns, we have used the suffix yem. So, instrumental case form of the masculine nouns are formed by using either om or yem. So, now let us move on to the neuter gender nouns. So, how do we decline the neuter gender nouns in the instrumental case? Again, we will follow the same pattern will ask a question and then we'll try to answer them using the instrumental case of the noun so kakoi chai abichna piyut vinji kakoi chai abichna piyut vinji so which tea is preferred or which tea is usually drunk in india so which tea is usually preferred in india and the answer is chai smalakom chai smalakom tea with milk. So, you already know this thing that in India we prefer tea with milk. So, chai malakom. Malako ends with o and it is a neuter gender noun. So, whenever you come across a neuter gender noun with hard ending which means ending with o then we add m. So, malako malakom. Chai malakom. The next is the noun with the soft ending, neuter gender noun with soft ending. Gidya nakhojatsa nash gorat nakarche inji. 
где находится наш город на карте Индии. So where is our city located on the India map? On on the map of India. So where is our city located on the map of India? If you have to say that near the sea, how will you say that? Again, we'll use the same expression here. Riyadham sir. Riyadham sir. Moriam. So here, Moriam ends with ye, which is a soft vowel. So it's a soft ending noun. A soft ending neuter gender noun. So whenever you come across a soft ending neuter gender noun, we'll use yem. So again, in both the masculine and neuter gender nouns, we are using two endings. The first one is om, and the other one is yem. So this is how we decline the masculine and neuter gender nouns in the instrumental case. In the next part, we'll discuss about the declension of the feminine gender nouns. We are now discussing about the declension of singular nouns in the instrumental case. We have already discussed how do masculine and neuter nouns decline in the instrumental case. Now we'll look at how feminine nouns decline in the instrumental case, and we are only talking about singular nouns. We'll follow the same pattern for this thing. We have written down some examples with the noun in the instrumental case as answers. The first thing, first example I have written here is "Chem we pishitev chitraji." Chem we pishitev chitraji. So, with what or what do you write in the notebook with, or with what do you write in the notebook? So, if we have to say that I write in the notebook with a pen, how would you say that? Ya pishuf chitraji ruchkai. Ya pishuf chitraji ruchkai. So, ruchka, which ends with a, becomes ruchkai. So, we are dropping a, and then we are adding o and e kratke. To get its instrumental case form, so how do we decline a feminine noun with a ending? We drop the ending a and add o and e kratke. So ruchka ruchkai. The next ending is skim we ye zilif jeli. Skim we ye zilif Delhi. So with whom did you go to Delhi? And if you have to say that I went to Delhi with family. So how do you say that? Family in Russian is simya. So when we come across a noun with ya ending, how do we decline that noun in the instrumental case? So you can answer this question as ya ye zilf dili simioi. So here, what are we doing? We are dropping the ending which is ya and adding yo and e kratke. Why we are using yo? We'll talk about it later on. So simia simioi. Next example with a different ending is gijia na kho jatsa universitetska biblioteka. Gijia na kho jatsa universitetska biblioteka. So where is the university library situated? And if you have to use laboratoria, laboratoria is laboratory. Laboratoria ends with e n ya. So how will you change laboratoria in the instrumental case? Riyadham laboratoria. Riyadham laboratoria. Universitets ka biblioteka na khodatsa Riyadham laboratoria. So the university library is located near the laboratory. So here laboratoria so we are dropping ya and adding ye and e kratke. Laboratoria, laboratory. So this is how we change the nouns with e a ending. Like photographia will be photographie, and so on. The next ending is the nouns with a soft sign ending. So there are feminine nouns with soft sign ending. So how do you change or how do you decline the nouns, feminine nouns with soft sign ending? For example, gijiya lishit uchiyabnik. So where is the textbook lying? Riyadham's Chitrajyo, Riyadham's Chitrajyo, or next to the notebook. So Chitraj is a feminine noun which ends with a soft sign. 
So, what happens when we use this noun in the instrumental case? We do not do anything, we just add u after the ending. So, chitraj, chitraj u. Uchebnik lishit ryadam chitraj u. The textbook is lying next to the notebook. So, this is how we decline the feminine nouns. And if you look at this thing, simia, I have told you that there is some deviation from the rule which we are going to talk about later on. So, now we will discuss the deviations from the normal rule and the changes in the nouns which do not follow the regular pattern in the instrumental case. So, apart from the rules of declension that we studied just now, there are other rules also for declension of nouns in the instrumental case. One of them being, if a noun or if the stem of a noun ends with either of these consonants, either z, ch, sh, sh or ts, then we have to see whether the ending is stressed or unstressed. If the ending is stressed, then while declining the nouns, we will use om with the masculine noun and oe with the feminine noun. For example, nosh, nosh means knife. So, nosh will have najom in the instrumental case. So, nosh, najom, switcha, switcha is candle. So, how will you decline switcha in the instrumental case? As you can see, the stem is stressed here. So, it has the stressed ending that is why we will use o e kratke, switcha, switch o e. Similarly, vrach, vrach is a masculine noun with stressed ending. So, vrach, vrach om. So, we will use om, achets, achets again has a stressed ending. So, we will use om, atsom, achets, atsom, achets is father. So, when the ending is stressed, then we use om with masculine nouns and o e kratke with the feminine nouns. So, what happens when the ending is unstressed? So, if the ending is unstressed in the nouns where stem ends with either z, ch, sh, sh or ts, then we use ye, ye and e kratke with the feminine nouns and yem with the masculine nouns. So, let us start with the examples. Yunasha, Yunasha is adolescent. So, Yunasha is a masculine noun with i ending. So, Yunasha, Yunashe, as you can see we are using ye and e kratke. Pchitsa, Pchitsa is a bird. Pchitsa again as you can see the ending is unstressed and e here is stressed, chitsa, chitse. So, we are using ye and e kratke. Tavarish, tavarish is a masculine noun with the ending sh. So, what happens when we use this noun in the instrumental case? Tavarishim, why yem? Because the ending is unstressed, tavarishim. Stalitsa, stalitsa, this noun also ends with ts and a, its stem ends with ts. So, what will we use in the ending in the instrumental case? Stalitse, stalitse, yei, because the ending is unstressed. So, if the ending is stressed in a noun whose stem ends with z, ch, sh, sh, or ts, then we use om or yem. Om or oi. But if the ending is unstressed, then we use either yem with masculine nouns and ye with the feminine nouns. There are a couple of more rules that we will discuss now. Position of stress also plays a very important role while declining the masculine nouns with 
soft consonant ending and feminine nouns with ya ending. As you can see, if the ending is stressed, for example, slavar, slavar ends with a soft consonant or a consonant with a soft sign, slavar and you can see that the last syllable is stressed, var. So, if we come across a masculine noun with soft consonant ending, then in the instrumental case, we will decline that noun with adding yom. So, instead of using yem, we are using yom. The same way, let us look at the another noun, masculine noun with soft consonant ending like jain, jain is day. So, how will you decline this noun in the instrumental case? Jain will become dhniom, dhniom. So, we are using again yom, why? Because the last or the ending is stressed. So, what will happen when the ending is unstressed? For example, uchichal, uchichal as you can see there are three vowels out of which the middle one is stressed, the ending is unstressed. So, if the ending is unstressed in the nouns or the masculine nouns with soft consonant ending, how will you decline that particular noun in the instrumental case? We will use yem. So, uchichal, uchichal yem in the instrumental case. Similarly, pripada vachal, pripada vachal yem. So, here again as you can see the ending is unstressed, penultimate vowel is stressed. So, we will use yem. So, if the ending is stressed, then we use yom, if the noun ends with a soft consonant and if the ending is unstressed, then we use yem. So, slavar, slavar yom, but uchichal, uchichal yem. So, the next point is feminine nouns with ya ending. So, if the feminine noun ends with ya, then what happens? How do we decline the noun in the instrumental case? So, again the position of stress will come into play. So, if the ending is stressed, for example, simya, in simya the ending is stressed, the stress is on ya. So, how will you decline this noun in the instrumental case? Again we will use the same pattern. Sim yoi. So, instead of using yei, we are using yoi. Sim yoi. Sim ya. Sim yoi. Why? Because the last syllable is stressed or the ending is stressed. The same way, zimlia. Zimlia is earth. So, how will you decline this noun in the instrumental case? Zim lioi. Ya is stressed. That is why we are replacing ya with yoi. And if the ending is unstressed, for example, piesnia, then we will use ye. So, if the ending is unstressed, we will use ye. For example, piesnia, piesni, tiotia, tiotie. So, this is a very important thing that you need to remember by declining the nouns in the instrumental case. So, we are now talking about only singular nouns. Now, let us come to march and doch. March and Doch, as we have already discussed, they have a different declining pattern. So, when it comes to declining them in the instrumental case, you have to remember that they decline in the same way as other soft sign ending nouns. The only difference is we add ye and r in the stem to get its instrumental case form. So, March becomes Machiryu and Doch, Dochiryu. So, this was about the declension of singular nouns in the instrumental case. So, now we will move on to the next topic. So, now we will learn the nouns with the suffixes anin, yanin, or onak, or yonak. Why we are learning them separately? Because their declension in plural, especially is different from other nouns in various cases. So, for example, I have written here three nouns, Anglicianen, Christianen and Ribionak. Anglicianen is an Englishman, 
Christianen is a farmer and Ribionak is a child. And I have written their declension in plural in various cases. You have to memorize them by heart and while using them in different cases, you have to remember them. So, nominative singular is Anglicianen, Christianen and Ribionak. So, what is the nominative plural of these three nouns? Anglicianen, Anglicianne. So, as you can see, what we are doing is we are dropping e n from the end and we are adding ye, Anglicianen, Anglicianne, Christianen, Christiane. Ribionak has altogether a different nominative plural, dieci, Ribionak, dieci. The genitive plural of Anglicianen is Anglician, Christianen, Christian and Ribionak Dietie. Accusative plural is similar to the genitive plural Anglician, Christian and Dietie. The dative plural form of Anglicianen is Anglicianum, Christianum and Dietium. Instrumental plural form of these three nouns are Anglicianum, Christianum, Dietium. Here you have to remember that we are not using yami, we are using a soft sign and then me, jit me. Prepositional plural of these three nouns are Anglicianach, Christianach, i Dietiach. So, this is how we decline the nouns with the endings anin, yanin or onak, yonak in various cases in plural. The other example of these nouns are Grajdanin, which means citizen, citizen of a country. Egyptianin, Egyptian, I mean the person from Egypt. And Zimlianin, Zimlianin means terrestrial or earthen. So, this is about the nouns with the suffixes anin, yanin, onak, and yonak. So, now we will move on to our next topic. Now, I will read out a text in which there are some words used in the instrumental case. Please pay attention to the use of those words carefully and after reading the text, I will tell you the meaning of the text also. And the text is called Bit Ilinibit, that means to be or not to be. As you know, this is a famous expression of Shakespeare, to be or not to be. So, let us start the text. Uminia ochen serios nea problema. Pachti kak drame Shakespeare. Munia uche simnat such liet. Cheer is dua mesetsa ya zakonchu shkolu. No ya ishun is nayo kem buit. Munia ochen trudna vibrach prafesio. Maya mama hochet stobi yabil vrachum. Ana gavarit. Što vrač vsemje eto očen udobna. Možna ni hadič palikliniku. Moji papa hočet, što bi ja bil programistem, kak on. On očen ljubet svoju profesiju. Dumet, što ana samaja interesnaja in nužnaja. Moja babuška hočet, što bi ja bil financistem. Ana dumet, Što financisti rabotet s djengami i v njih to še mnoga djenek. Moji djeduška hočet, što bi ja bil ljotčikom. On očen hatjel stač ljotčikom, no ni smog. Zdarovje ni očen haroše. I teper on mečtajet, što vnuk budet ljotčikom. So now I will tell you the meaning of the text. I have got a very serious problem. Almost like in Shakespeare plays. I am already 17 years old and two years after I am going to finish my school, but I still do not know what I would become. It is very difficult for me to choose profession. My mother wants me to become a doctor. She says that a doctor in the family is very convenient. You may not have to visit a polyclinic. My father wants me to become a software engineer like himself. 
he loves his job very much and thinks that this is the most interesting and important. My grandmother wants me to become a financial expert. She thinks that financial experts work with money and they have a lot of money too. My grandfather wants me to become a pilot. He badly wanted to become a pilot but could not do. His health was not in a very good shape and now he dreams that his grandson would become a pilot. So this was about the text. And as you can see, there are words which have been used in the instrumental case like lochikam, pragramistam and financistam. So with this text, I will conclude this lesson here itself. So what all we have learnt in this lesson? We have learnt the declension of singular nouns in the instrumental case and we have also learnt the nouns with the suffixes anin, yanin, onak, yonak. So we will meet in the next class. Till then, spasiba nasvidanya.